Good morning. I want to thank you for joining with us once again here uh, this morning as we look into the Word of God. This is very different. It continues to be uh, for all of us. Uh, right now, our governor has extended the stay-at-home order until the end of the month. Uh, we as a church, we intend uh, certainly to honor that, and so we will continue uh, to do what we've been doing, uh, to record the message for you to view during uh, Sabbath. Uh, we will continue to have our virtual prayer meetings. You will continue to hear my voice <laughs> one way or another, uh, whether it's through, uh, through this. Uh, I, I try to call everyone and uh, just check up on y'all. And you do the same for me, and I am very thankful for that. Also, let me just say this. Uh, this week has been kind of a rough week for me personally. Uh, several of you not knowing uh, what was going on. Uh, the cards that you sent of encouragement came just at the right time. That's the God we serve. I thank you so much for that. And uh, you know what? There is light at the end of the tunnel. It is not a train. We will get through this, and, and we are looking forward to when we can meet together uh, once again. I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles, turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 2, this morning. Uh, just for a couple of minutes, we want to look at motherhood. Uh, Mother's Day fast upon us here. And you know what? I am thankful uh, for, for my mom and my dad. I was able to talk with them uh, just yesterday, as a matter of fact. And uh, generally, our phone calls uh, involve a lot of joking, a lot of catching up, a lot of laughing, and, and I just enjoy that. Time well spent with them. I miss not being able to see them right now. Uh, it's one of those deals, uh, boy, you just wish you could, but maybe now isn't exactly the best time, but we have the phone and uh, we are able to catch up and to connect and, and to keep each other connected on, on different things. And so uh, I am very thankful indeed for that. Uh, before we get into our text, I want to tell you a little story. Uh, it starts out one afternoon when a gentleman comes home from work and, and he pulls his truck into the driveway and all of a sudden he sees the results of mayhem. He sees candy wrappers all over his well-manicured yard. He sees toys that he didn't even know existed uh, in the bushes. He sees clothes all over the side yard. Uh, he runs into the house. In the house, uh, it just looks like a, a tornado uh, had gone through. Uh, there were dishes everywhere. Uh, there was a cereal that, was, that left a trail from the kitchen to the dining room to the living room over to one of the kids' bedrooms, and it just looked awful. The refrigerator door is standing wide open, the freezer wide open, and stuff just scattered everywhere. And so uh, by this point, of course, uh, the gentleman very concerned about what's going on, and so he goes to find his bride. He goes to find his wife, and, and he finds her. And she is, is in her bedroom. She is sitting in her favorite chair. She has her cup of coffee with her, and she is right in the middle of a great book. Honey, he says, are you okay? She says, well, yeah, of course I'm okay. Remember how every day when you come home from work, you always ask, uh, what in the world I did all day? Well, today I did none of it. <laughs> what a great story, right? Uh, uh, I believe with all of my heart that uh, mothers are the ones uh, uh, that, that keep the household going and one of the most important roles uh, that you will find on the face of this earth. I firmly believe that. I'm thankful. Uh, for, for a godly mother. I'm thankful for a, a father who loves my mom very much. And, and it was always and still is a partnership with them. Uh, so God puts a very high priority, I think, on, on mothers and those uh, that care uh, for others. You know, there's some men in our history 
uh, that really felt exactly the same way. George Washington said this, all I am, I owe to my mother, I attribute all of my success in life to the moral, intellectual, physical education that I received from her. Abraham Lincoln uh, had this to say, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always, always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. All that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. William McKinley said this, by the blessings of heaven, I mean to live, die, and in all things please God in the faith of my mother. These were, these were presidents of our country who attributed their success in life uh, to a mother. The great preacher uh, Charles Spurgeon said this, I cannot begin to tell how much I owe to the solemn word of my good mother. All the books of the world could not contain her godly influence upon me. Man, that is fantastic when you stop to consider uh, the devotion and the love and recognizing what their mothers had to put into them. And I firmly believe that starts at an early age and it just carries on. And so they certainly held uh, their moms in very high regard. I want to read out of Exodus chapter uh, 2, starting in verse 1. It says this, Now a man from the house of Levi went and took his wife, a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that... He was a fine child. She hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes, daubed it with a bitumen and a pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. His sisters stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the girl went and called to the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me. I will give you wages for that. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, uh, one of his people. You know what? We see a lot that we can unpack here uh, in the next several minutes about what it is uh, to be a godly mother and to have faith and trust in God. You know, really over the last decade or so especially, uh, we have heard the calls for men in this country and in the entire world uh, to return to being fathers to their children. But the need for mothers is just as great. You know, I've read through the Bible uh, many times. And I can tell you there is nothing more important to the future of the church, nothing more important to the future of this country than godly parents doing what God has called them to do. Something that you've heard me say very often, you know what, change doesn't uh, begin in the White House. When we pray for change in our country, uh, change needs to begin in our house, uh, right where we are. And that is the direct result of godly parenting. So here in this text, I think we see a model of motherhood. 
I think we see what motherhood is, is supposed to look like and some things that we can take away from that. Uh, a little bit of background here uh, to the story. Uh, the people of Israel, uh, they'd been in Egypt for a long time. They began to multiply. They began to grow in number. And as they did that, uh, that kind of made Pharaoh a little bit nervous. That kind of uh, gave him pause to consider how powerful they may become. And so what Pharaoh did was this. He enslaved them. He put them into slavery. They were still having babies. They were still growing in numbers. And so then Pharaoh comes up with this plan. He comes up with this idea that every boy born to the Hebrews was to be thrown into the Nile River. What a plan. What a dastardly plan. But yet we see that God can work through all of those things, can't he? So the order is given. Moses is put into, uh, into the basket. He is uh, put into the Nile River so that he could have a chance at life. And that is where we pick up here uh, in, in Exodus chapter 2. You know, when we look at, at the mother of Moses, I think it's interesting. We don't really, uh, we don't see her name until Exodus chapter 6. And there's only a couple of places in scripture where she is even mentioned. You see, her name was Jacobed. I think, and, and this is just me uh, uh, thinking here, you know what, being a, a mother is such a godly and a noble profession. I also think that uh, it is one of those professions uh, that uh, uh, is not recognized. It's not recognized nearly, nearly enough. You know, uh, you don't see uh, motherhood as, quote unquote, a high profile occupation, yet it is one of the most noble ones uh, that you will find. You don't see moms signing autographs. You don't see moms getting book deals for just being a mom. Okay. You know what? Uh, uh, we see uh, sports deals. We see book deals. We see all kinds of things from uh, the, the Hollywood, uh, from the sports arena, different things like that. Uh, the true heroes, uh, I think, has been said, are not the actors of Hollywood. They are not uh, uh, the sports figures. You know what? Uh, they are our parents. They are those that have had a godly influence on us. Those that have shaped the next generation. There is no more noble function than that. Moms have such a big impact. Uh, um, if, if uh, I praise God for my mom. I praise God that she has helped form who I am today. So you can either praise her or blame her. Uh, this is where we are. And I'm thankful uh, for the mom that I have. I really am. Uh, something else that we see here, first of all, Jacobed, not very well known, but you don't have to be well known uh, to be a great parent. Uh, we see that Jacobed, uh, goes ahead and builds this basket, okay, uh, to put Moses into. What faith she must have had. What, what faith she must have had just to trust God in such a trying circumstance. You know what, there are times where things are just going to be outside of our control, aren't they? Uh, we don't have to look any further uh, than the news, uh, than the window uh, that is, that is uh, right beside me here. Uh, right now, here in this country and around the world, we find ourselves uh, in a place where uh, things are kind of spiraling out of control a little bit, if, if you look around. Uh, here's what I know. Uh, with everything spiraling, spiraling around, uh, God is still in control of things. God is still there. And I'm thankful for that. Here we find Jacobet. What am I going to do? You know what? She trusts that God 
is going to take care of things. I want this story to encourage you uh, this morning. You might be going through something. You know what? Your family might be in a serious crisis. I've, I've talked to many of you. And can I say, thankfully, praise God, uh, we seem to be weathering this storm together, and I'm thankful for that. I also spoke with a family earlier this week where they're not doing so well. Uh, you might be going through something, a serious crisis within your family. Uh, as God was bigger than Pharaoh's plan uh, to kill Moses, uh, God has a bigger, better plan for you and I. He really does. Jacobet had no way of knowing what God was going to do, but she trusted him. Uh, we can certainly do the same thing. In the verses 4 through 10, we see God's plan in action. Uh, Pharaoh wanted to kill uh, Moses. God ends up having Moses raised in that very house, <laughs> right under Pharaoh's nose. He absolutely have to love that. We don't know how long this went on. Uh, we, we don't know. Uh, we don't know how long a Jacobed had with her son Moses. But verse 11 tells us something that is very important. It tells us that when Moses was grown, when Moses was grown, he looked upon his people. He looked upon his people. You know, the Bible never specifically tells us how Moses learned he was Jewish or when he learned, but it does give some pretty good clues as to how that happened. Just think about it. When he was three months old, he's taken to Pharaoh's daughter. Jewish history and faith in God wasn't taught there, but his mother was called in to nurse him, and at age 40, he sides with his people. What an education he must have received from Jacobed. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, it says this, uh, the great uh, uh, faith chapter of the Bible says, By faith of Moses, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin for a season. Can I say this? Uh, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. How did Moses know that he was one of the Hebrews? How did he hear that in order to have faith, uh, to do these amazing, amazing things, he had ended up where he was? Well, I can tell you, it came from a godly mother. That's the third lesson that we see here. You know what? As parents, none of us know how long we are going to have our children with us. And, you know, that's an agonizing thought uh, to think about, isn't it? That is something that we just don't want to, uh, we don't want to think about. It's a place we don't want to go. But the reality is we don't know how long we will have with our children. You know what? It seems like just yesterday when our kids were, were in diapers, when our kids were learning to walk, it seems just like yesterday when we were giving them the keys to the car. It seems like just yesterday when they, were, when they were graduating from high school. It seems like just yesterday when they were getting married and starting a family of their own. Boy, we sure can't slow time down, can we? We wish we could, uh, but we can't. But here's the thing. Moses' mom, Jacobed, Certainly, she knew the value of redeeming the time that she had. She made the best of the time that she had with her son. Let me say this. Uh, moms, uh, dads, I'm, I'm putting you in here too. Uh, grandmas, grandpas, uh, great-grandmas, great-grandpas, 
Uh, Beth, uh, for you, great, great. Uh, uh, Grandma, the best thing that we can do is to teach our kids, is to pray with our kids, is to lead our children in the ways of God. Teach them right from wrong. Teach them good from bad. Teach them how to make good decisions that will honor God and his son, Jesus Christ. Teach them, not just by saying words, but by living out your life in the light of the faith that you have. This is your calling. This is what God has called us to. Let me say this. I firmly believe that it is one of the greatest callings one will ever have. Loving Father, God, we thank you for the gift of, of our parents as we celebrate mom today. Father, we celebrate mom thanking you for putting us in the families that you have given to us. Father, we praise you for, for what we have been taught, for what we have learned. Father, we thank you for the faithfulness the example that we see here with Jacobed this morning. Father, I pray that, uh, uh, that this day and every day, Lord, we would be thankful for the gift of family. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to invite you to join with us at uh, 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, Sam will be leading us in our prayer time. I appreciate her doing that so faithfully on Mondays and Fridays. If you have a prayer concern, we invite you uh, to go ahead and to let us know that. Uh, you can give me a call. I will make sure that uh, Sam gets that information. You can feel free to post it right here if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, Sam will see that as well. Once again, we look forward to when we can meet together again. And I pray God's blessing on you this week as you continue to be the church. God bless you.